Today we're going to take uh, a problem we already solved in a previous tutorial. And we're going to take the uh, case for the neutral axis was at 250 and uh, resolve for the axial 316.6 and the moment 97.5 in this interaction diagram. But we're not going to use the force method. We're going to use uh, MY over I theory. Uh, it's uh, a little bit more uh, challenging to do this and I think we're going to learn a lot about the MY over I equation and it's going to give us some extra confidence here. So I've, I've redrawn the uh, section. We have an axial load somewhere here but instead of having uh, a fully effective section we only have part of it effective and really that's this rectangular area and this uh, transformed area of steel. And the challenge is to is to somehow come up with this distribution here and uh, find out a pure axial uh, distribution which is here and a pure flexural distribution here. When I say pure flexural I mean uh, it's a case where the what's above the neutral axis and what's below the neutral axis the forces have to add up. See here this is not pure uh, pure flexural because when I have these forces above and below it comes out to the externally applied axial. That's why we break it up into two separate components and superimpose. So this is the P over A component, and this is the MY over I component. Okay, so first of all, we need to find out what the uh, transformed area is of this of this new section, and that's going to be the uh, transformed area of the N area steel 4866 plus what's ever available. Uh, which is that this is all cracked here so all that's available is this rectangular section above the neutral axis in here that's 250 times 300 and when we work that out it will come out to be uh, let's see it's uh, 4866 plus 250 times 300 79,866 millimeters squared. Now, before we can find out what the uh, stress distribution is here, we ha really have to find out the pure uh, bending neutral axis location. So we're assuming that this part of it is in tension. And this, this distance here is 250 from here to here but we don't know what the neutral axis is. We're going to have to solve it and we'll use uh, static moments. Alright, so we, we already know static moments. We're taking area times distances, right? So the area above the neutral axis is this distance related to this distance C here. So I'll draw in. So that this is going to be our C now. And uh, we'll take uh, above the neutral axis, we'll say 300 wide, 300 times C is the area of the rectangle. And then the centroid is uh, this distance here, which is, or, or no, it's not, no, that's not right. It's going to be the distance from the centroid of the rectangle here, which is half of C, C over 2. And that has to equal the area of this rectangle, which is this distance, 250, right? That's 250 from here to here, minus C. So that's 300 times 250 minus C times 250 minus C over 2. So that's squared divided by 2 plus the uh, transformed area of steel, which is 4866 times its distance 550, from here to here is 550, minus C. So I don't have the time to go through how to solve it, it's a quadratic, but when you solve this, it, w it would come out to be, I already, uh, reca I already calculated this, and it comes, comes out to be 150.8 uh, 
eight nine millimeters. So I can just show what those values are here. Just gonna quickly write them in, dimension them. So we know that this total distance that's 250, right? And now we just solve for oops, what C is so so this distance C is going to be 150.89 and then the res remaining is, rem the remainder is 250 minus 150 0.89, which is 99.11. And now that we have the uh, the neutral axis worked out, we can say we can come up with a, a way to solve for the top fibers. When I add them up to equal 10, and the and the bottom fibers, which are here, when I mean bottom bottom of what's available in the concrete, plus this would have to equal zero. And the trick we use to do that is we take the residual, the 10 minus this stress, which is 10 minus 0, which is 10 MPa. And we can we know that the distance from here in stress terms, from here to here, the absolute value of this stress would have to equal 10 to make this swing in stress go to 10 to 0. So 10 MPa, 10 minus 0, 10 MPa, times 150.89 divided by 250 is going to equal the top fibers 10 the stress in the top fibers 10 times 150.89 divided by uh, 250 that comes out to 6.04 MPa And then we can do the same thing on these bottom fibers. We can take 10 MPa times 99.1 one, one millimeters over 250. And we could say 10 times 99.11 one, divided by 250 equals 3.96 uh, MPa. And then we could say, okay, what's the stress here? We know it's 10 in, in, in the final combined stress state. So 10 minus the 6.04 has to equal this stress. So 10 minus 6.04 would equal 3.96. So we know the stress here now is 3.96 MPa. And look at this. I mean, it's a constant stress, so this has to be 3.96 MPa. Also, this has to be 3.96 as well. So the stress here is 3.96, but it's negative, it's in tension. So minus 3.96 uh, plus 3.96 would have to equal this uh, 0 MPa stress distribution, which it, which it balances out to, which is great. So we now we have two, two stress distributions, a pure axial stress of 3.96 and a pure flexural stress of uh, 6.04 going down to 3.96 and then some other uh, stress in, in here in the steel. Uh, now we're not concerned, I know this 3.96 MPa stress here actually is higher than the tensile uh, crack stress. Remember we worked that out before it was 0.6 times the square root of F prime C and it's higher than, than the cracking stress but it's okay because the final stress is lower as zero, so it's not a concern.